Welcome to the Pinhole Camera. You already know that light travels in straight lines. We are going to use a pinhole camera to better understand this concept. We are going to make the pinhole camera, but before we do that, we need to get the materials. First, you are going to need an empty Pringles can. Make sure to dust it out so there are no traces of Pringles left. Next, you're going to need a small piece of wax paper. You're also going to need a piece of black paper. Next, you are going to need tape. I actually need a lot of tape because I love tape. <laughs> you're also going to want a nail and hammer. I use this all and it actually made too big of a hole. So you're going to want something that's going to make a small hole the size of a pin in the bottom of our Pringles can. The pinhole camera that I use as an example was made with a nail and hammer. That is actually the perfect size for a pinhole. <music> Lastly, you're going to need scissors or an X-Acto knife because we're going to use it to cut the Pringles container. Wait, don't do it yet. We're going to do those steps together. All right, so here are the materials we need to make a pinhole camera. One, an empty Pringles can. Two, a small piece of wax paper. Three, a piece of black paper. Four, tape. Five, nail and hammer. And six, scissors. Those are the materials you need to make this pinhole camera. Now let's go make the pinhole camera. Okay, first you're going to need to get your Pringles container empty. So eat those chips and then dust it out to make sure there are no traces of Pringles left. Next, Use your nail and hammer to make a tiny hole the size of a pin on the metal part of the Pringles container. Make sure you put it in the center. Uh-oh, I told you this one was way too big. So really, a little tap of the hammer and a nail should make a tiny hole. Look at the one on the left. That one is the size of a pinhole that you want. The one on the right is just way too big. You want something nice and small, like a pinhole. Be careful. You might want to have an adult help you make a pinhole in the bottom of your Pringles can. All right, here comes our third step. This is our scissor time. You are going to cut the tube off about two inches or so from the base. You don't have to measure it. Mine's up a little bit higher. Um, you can use scissors or perhaps an X-Acto knife. You might want an adult to help you do this. Next, you're going to take that piece of wax paper and you are going to put it over that bottom part of the tube and tape it there so that it's nice and tight and smooth, just like mine. See that? Next, you are going to put your container back together or reassemble it, and then you are going to tape it so it stays together. So reassemble and tape the tube. <music> Lastly, I want you to tape that black piece of paper around the outside of where that cut was to help block or absorb the light. Now the pinhole camera is ready to be used. Take off that lid and look through there. Here's what the inside will look like when you're all done making your pinhole camera. All right, 
let's go over the steps on how to make a pinhole camera. First, you need to empty and dust the Pringles can. Then, make a pinhole in the center of the metal part of the can. Remember, a hammer and nail, just a little tap, makes perfect ones. Then, cut the tube. You're gonna tape the wax paper over the bottom part of the tube. Reassemble the tube and tape it back together. And then you're gonna tape the black paper around the outside. Now that we have our pinhole camera all assembled, it's time to go outside and use the pinhole camera. So what you're going to do to use the pinhole camera is take off that lid and look with one eye in that opening. I actually like to cover my other eye so I can see better when I look through the pinhole camera. I have had the best luck using pinhole cameras outdoors on a sunny day. The sunlight seems to work best because look at that one spot that light is getting into. It's that single hole that you made with the nail or as we call it, the pinhole. That is the only place that light is entering. So we're gonna look at a pinhole camera cam, <laughs> meaning I'm gonna put my camera in the pinhole so you can see what I see. We are gonna go ahead and observe with the pinhole camera this back part of my house. So I can see a couple windows, I can see a pipe, the roof line is right there, and a couple treetops and lots of clouds. So when we look at that same thing with the pinhole camera, look at how it changes. Are you able to see my house in the pinhole camera? I can see that roof line and the pipe coming up and also that curved window. How do those two images look different? Well, the pinhole camera makes that image appear upside down. the pinhole camera somewhere else. Oh, how about right here? I can see lots of trees and that light pole. So let's look at it with our pinhole camera. Are you able to spot that light pole or any of the trees? I know I can. Once again, they look upside down. So here's what it looks like with my eyes. But on the right, I can see what it looks like with the pinhole camera. It's upside down. Pretty cool, huh? So I bet you're wondering, how does a pinhole camera work? Well, we have to remember the first thing about light, and that is light travels in straight lines. Only a few of the light rays reflecting off each point are traveling in a direction that will let them pass through the hole. Light travels in straight lines. In particular, light travels in straight lines through the pinhole too. So light that starts on the left of the pinhole passes through the hole and ends up on the right. The 
human eye works in the same way as the pinhole camera. The pinhole is comparable to your pupil and the screen, or as we call it, the wax paper, is like the retina. So we said that the pupil is comparable to the pinhole. Remember, the black spot in the middle of your iris is called the pupil, and that is an opening, and it gets bigger when it's dark outside to let more light in, or smaller to let less light in when it's very bright. Both the pupil and the pinhole let light in. We said that the retina is like the screen, or we used wax paper. We'd say that because when you look at something, the lenses in your eyes focus the picture, or the image as we call it, on the back of your eyeball, on the retina, and the picture is upside down there. So that is why the screen, or that wax paper we used, is like the retina. They both make the images look upside down. So why doesn't the world look upside down to your eye? Well, it's because your brain interprets the upside down image and flips it because you know that the sky is up and the ground is down. This makes me wonder, what would happen if you look through a pinhole camera for a very long time? What do you think? Scientists have actually done this experiment using special glasses. After several weeks, you will no longer be able to see the image on the screen as upside down because your brain will stop flipping the image. However, when you remove the glasses, the world does not look upside down to your naked eye. No one really knows why. It's one of those amazing mysteries of our human brains. Hmm, so what questions do you still have about how light energy works? I love how the pinhole camera really shows us that light travels in straight lines. A pinhole camera is definitely a fun and easy way to understand more of our light concepts. They're not very difficult to make either. I once had students donate empty Pringles containers and Mr. Allforce and I made about 30 pinhole cameras for my students. That's a lot of pinhole cameras and chips. <laughs> I really hope that you're able to make and use a pinhole camera. It's so cool to see those images go upside down because of how light travels in straight lines. All right, that's it for me. Take care. Peace.